See, because I just think there's some aspects of conditioning uh, that are very hard to lose. Yes. Like um, the society you live in, the culture you're brought up in, it implants a lot of ideas in your head. Yeah. And detaching from them. Or I or cannot I say that I, uh, you know, sorry. that it maybe initially when someone is beginning to have some uh, maybe superficial interest in spirituality, these questions begin to come, but they don't have too much of a bite. Mm. They are just rubbing, you know, they're not what well, they don't have. They don't sink in. They don't have a bite in yet. And I don't know what I would say to someone like this. I probably would say nothing at all. <laughs> you have to slowly find your way. You have to drift along a little bit more, bump into a few other things or whatever, and somehow come to a deeper, stimulate it more deeply to 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 question things, not not so not so casually. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm talking about myself, I don't think I do question them casually. Mm. Um, but I'd like to integrate. Mm. I don't know if integrate is the right word. Mm. But integrate this that seeing. Or that recognition yeah. into a worldly life, yeah. as maybe seen more conventionally. I understand. I'll tell you what. Like, yeah. I was brought up as a Hindu, mm -hmm. and in the, you know, it's generally seen about the life stages. You know, you're a kid, you grow up, you go to school, and you do a job, you get married, you have kids, mm -hmm. then you retire, and then the last stage of life. And this is the way I was always conditioned: is mm -hmm. when you then meditate and you, you know. Mm. You become spiritual. It's like it's the way of our, you know, yeah. of our tradition. All, of, like. all of what you name yeah. is consistent with every other tradition yeah. except the last stage. Right. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> you do all the same things. Yeah. Last stage, you start to meditate, get spiritual. Uh, okay, in England we don't have that. Mm -hmm. You know, that is kind of uh, something. Okay, but generally the the yeah. same aspirations. Uh, they are side by side. They follow many different. Uh, uh, you know, groups, religions, creeds, sects, uh, whatever, they, they have the same aspiration, human, human evolutionary or progressive uh, life, no? How to balance? Mm. Not possible. It's not possible. No. A lot of people speak like this and it sounds like, Compromise. you know, it, no, it sounds like you know, it's possible uh, that who, who is going to balance it even? Who is going to balance it is the idea I have of myself. I have another idea that I can balance spirituality and worldly life. And it is the beginning stages of the sort of the invitation to, to look more deeply and to the stages of waking up, basically, you can say like this. But it is not possible uh, to to balance. The balance is already there, but it's not a person's balance. The balance is the balance of the cosmos, of the of the, uni the universal harmony is there in all things. It's already there. Even in these plants, it's there. In the way the, the, the whole cosmos works, there's an there's a order and a balance in it. In ourself also, there's that balance is there. But sometimes the balance we are thinking of is the balance which we, which are based on our concepts about life. And uh, if it were possible, uh, it would make human beings in a deeply arrogant beings. We are already arrogant enough, but if we could sort of like yeah, balance existence, that would be even we'd be, mm -hmm. we are far gone. The fact is because we cannot do it. Is a chance we have of really waking up from the the shallowness of our own um, uh, conditioning. The the balance is already there. Uh, what happens is that we feel out of balance because uh, we are mostly um, conditioned to believe we are um, our education, our upbringing and so on. And it doesn't really work at the level of pure uh, self-awareness in, in the true sense and pure happiness. It doesn't really work. So at some point, Although consciousness plays in this aspect of being a human being, it is designed to fail in order to succeed. You understand? 
if 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 it could succeed like that, then there will be no chance of us waking up, because mean that you'll be succeed you'll be succeeding in an illusion. So the, the illusion is as a built-in mechanism to fail, and in in failing you stand a chance of really coming to a true life. When I say failing, I mean failing uh, in that uh, our unique private personal world projection cannot work because it's basically selfish. You understand? It's based upon what I want and what I think, what my parents think is right, what my society think is right or something. And you have to go deeper than this because you are much, much more than that. We are much, much, much more than that. If we are to live and we can do and live at the level of our conditioning, you'll have a mediocre life. You can have ten billion dollars in the bank. Ten houses and a, a yacht and everything, but it's still a mediocre life. It will still be, and sometimes uh, you can have all those things and be deeply miserable also. So there are no guarantee for that, uh, and it seems a lot of people cannot tell the difference because so much the model of, you know, having material wealth and living in a certain place. Is like the ideal in many of our our people's projection that they seem like they'll be satisfied with that, and they almost fantasize and pretend or believe that they're happy in a, in a sense because you work so hard to fulfill that projection, and uh, I find it uh, a very very poor exchange, and we seem. Afraid uh, to live a life um, <coughs> which seems to us to be uncertain, but then I ask you, are you certain about your life? And people say, well, to be honest, they can't say you're certain. You can say that you're going to be alive tomorrow. No, you cannot say you're going to be alive tomorrow. Then why are you telling me that in three years you're going to have this and this? You don't even know if you're going to be breathing in the next five minutes. You don't know. So our sense of security is based a lot on fantasy, on projection, expectations, and so on. You see, so it is not easy. If it goes no further than this moment, where do you stand in your life? Are you content? Are you happy, or are you waiting to be happy? It is very good for someone to contemplate uh, uh, death in the sense that we think about. Um, in India, I know many times people. You're much more upfront. It's much more in your face, and you can you get more familiar, more comfortable with it. You can do. Because here we have our heads in the sand about these things. We rather just keep on dreaming that everything is going to be wonderful, it's going to be just like this. And so, and when I speak like that, it's. Fear comes, and the fear is there not because I put fear there, but because because underneath all of this is a fear. I want to get everything, get everything before it, before we run out of time or something. But you do what you have to do. In India, they also tell you, do what you have to do. But don't count the fruits of your actions. Don't try to claim them as yours. Then you're free in the moment. What does it mean? It means that somehow the activity of the vital force is up expressing through this form, and uh, that's part of your that's part of your dance you express. But while you're expressing now, don't be thinking, oh, next week how much will I express? No, you are just in this now. You don't know what is going to come. People die attending other people's funerals, and there are people who are afraid of ghosts who are themselves ghosts now. You don't know anything about anything. We don't know anything about anything like this. But we fantasize about a lot. And we take a lot of kind of false sense of security based upon our fear of coming to an end. 
uh, as you come more fully into your truth, this all mm, traumatic, anxious uh, concepts, they start to burn away, and this fear is not there. That's already his life. We're working so hard sometimes to gain things that we need this body to enjoy. Working so hard to gain things for this body to enjoy. And this body you cannot keep. Much less what you <coughs> search to entertain this body with. It is like this. I'm just pointing these things out because there's so much more to life than what you plan for and what we strive for. You can strive for these things. My call is to get people I don't want to I'm not waving a flag about it. But my message, my pointing is to something which is not expendable. Everything else is expendable. Everything else is passing. Just to point out to the human being something in them which is not passing. And if they care to know, and if they don't care to know, I'm fine with it. But at least to stir up inside, you know, that which will put an end to that type of trauma and that kind of suffering. Because there's a lot of suffering I see. Based upon our own ignorance and selfishness. So back to the point as you started, um, you have to plan for things, of course. And the more, in a sense, we are um, unclear as to our own nature, the more you are pulled into these type of situations in life where you have to be living by time, you have to be living by projections, you have to be living by plans. You are caught up in other people's traffic of plans and, and so on, and your life just gets enmeshed in so many different uh, uh, ways and relationships. And they say, when you should turn to spiritual life? When you are all burnt out, useless, good for nothing. Then maybe you are, yeah, all right, good. Yeah. <laughs> got some time for me now, or something? At the end. Why not at the beginning? Why not discover God at the beginning and enjoy all of it? Oh, I try and find at the end, which you may not reach that end in the time you think. Okay. Yeah, let's have a go and let's see how much money you can make, and then when you're kind of in, you're on your own in some old people's home or something, you know, and you won't be in the mood actually. <laughs> also, <laughs> you, the, the, that last stage may not come, that you are you have the interest uh, even for that. And you know, much of this type of life is just out of habit also. It's not necessarily people have really pondered over these things or really reflected on them. It's just because they're hand me your second hand concepts handed down to you. You never even question. Most of the things we think we know, we've never questioned them even. You just absorb them and carry on the tradition. And uh, why are you doing it? Because my father did it, and my father's father did it, and my mm -hmm. father's mother did it. Mm -hmm. So, but sometimes breaking, I find anyway, I'll talk about myself, mm. it's hard to break from that completely, even if my heart isn't in it, because of yes. fear of disappointing yes. others. Yes, I will tell you something. If we really could, if, we, if, if our families were really pleased and made happy by our actions, that's one thing. Mm. I don't know if that is even true. Um, you know, my emphasis will not be on trying to break tradition. I, that's not what I would want to say. I only say, find out what you are. 
you can live your tradition you can do what you have to do it will come you will you will you will have a, have a sense of it anyway that it's not this i don't feel that we have to say all these things to people oh stop doing this stop smoking so i say you know okay maybe that's not so good but i don't not going to spend time to to dwell on that because that's not the essential thing the essential thing is find out who you are that's all <coughs> not on breaking traditions that that would be a hardship it would put in a, a condition on you that doesn't belong to the truth you can realize you can realize the truth being completely a hindu faithful to, i don't know faithful to your tradition i don't know what you know superficially i would have to say superficially because if you're deeply faithful to anything you 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 will not find the truth if you're deeply faithful to just some tradition which you've never questioned then i would say that you you something you know it just won't, it doesn't unless it's superficial mm. it can be superficial that somehow you go through the mechanism of 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 that but underneath like shri maharaj say he says i allow my life to unfold hmm, according to its destiny and its karma i remain as i am where is the distinction made it means that somehow there's a life that seems to just kind of go on you find yourself engaged you find yourself opening a business you find that somehow things seems to unfold like this if you go to any town anywhere in the world to pe- places where people have never traveled in every city in every town in every village you'll find a shoemaker you'll find a priest you'll find a butcher you'll find a doctor you'll find a farmer you'll find these things do people decide i think i want to be a butcher no sometimes it's like consciousness puts you there consciousness puts you there it inspires in each body to 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 come together in a way that somehow um your community can work it's not human beings create human beings don't create themselves in that way it's called consciousness is doing like this So I don't want to say that uh, if you feel somehow that you are you are a lawyer, an accountant, uh, a bookkeeper, a nurse, a dustman, a priest, whatever it is, something inspires that role. Turn turn your face towards that, and puts inside your heart uh, an affinity for this direction or something. No, I don't feel that's a problem in any of this. just as say whatever your profession whether you have one or not you know you are find out what this you are ness is find out who you are and see that you will see that it's not merely our conditioning which is an aspect of our self it's not your gender it's not your race it's not your culture it's not your religion even it's not even your belief system something is there before all of those things were formed they were not with you from the origin from the the not original to you and like this if you come to see and it doesn't take very long it doesn't take 6 months it doesn't take it can takes it doesn't take it keeps getting shorter actually it can take 6 hours it can take 60 minutes it can take 6 minutes it can take 6 seconds and at a certain time it won't take any time at all it just gets shorter this is what this is what is beautiful about this reminding not creating not inventing not making perfect discovering uh, what you are this is the beauty in fact of advaita uh, guidance it points you immediately beyond all the all the phenomena that appears in front of us to show you that you cannot be any of that it is the essence of all religion this advaita pointing is the essence of all religion is the direct path is the mirror path how much practice you need to look at your reflection in a mirror so i'm going to call it the mirror path that direct and sometimes our minds don't like what is direct it 
once it's much more in love with the journey than in the destination and you can be traveling journeying practicing being spiritual for hundreds of lifetimes and it will go on because perhaps if you're brought very much to the very door behind which is freedom right there as the as you're turning the knob you'll be finding something saying just a minute I'll be back in just a minute and you'll be gone again another few lifetimes if you can discover what it is that runs away from that and that is right here right now if you can find something else of greater value than that in life then please share it with me of finding out what really dwells here if it is it material ultimately or is it immaterial that which is residing here the most conscious the most pure the most true <coughs> is it something that can be found does it have does it have a unique image is it distinct is it personal is it an individual does it have a form these things you can find out any human being who has come to that been pulled by that you will find out for yourself once you've found this this priceless treasure you know then somehow you'll honor it until even that concept fall away when you when you talk about um, using the inquiry as a painkiller sometimes mm. so now when you point uh. it's, it's clear to me that it's formless yeah. and it's non-personal yeah and it's here yes and you are what that I'm not just saying it because I've read it. Are you more no. that than 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 right? You can take mm -hmm. a bit of time. Right is part of that. I think your mom would be happy to hear you say that. <laughs> Okay, continue now. <clears throat> the pain you you, you you talk about using inquiry as a painkiller. That's uh -huh. not a that's not a good use of this approach of this mm. method. Yeah, it's not I, the purpose of it. No. Okay. But a good side effect of it is that it does relieve suffering and pain. Yes. But when, so let's say I'm caught, you know, I'm, my consciousness is in a struggle with life at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. So, conflicts mm. to deal with and mm. whatever, and I'm in a struggle. Mm. Then to bring, if you like, a kind of mental calmness. Mm -hmm. If I was to use a method like this yes you would say that's using it as a painkiller <laughs> would you I'm, uh, I'm, yeah I'm yeah yes I, I, I would say that to you I wouldn't just go and say that to anybody it's not my business I only speak really mostly to people who come to me and they have they have a sense that uh, uh, we can talk and through our talk we feel uh, an inner kind of not an inner connection with each other's persons but somehow an inner connection with with, with truth truth sharing let's put it like this no mm. so something something is meaningful in that so what i'm saying is yes it is fine if the inquiry is employed to alleviate uh, uh, some mental emotional or even physical suffering even it will because it will do this also I am not going to jump on your back and go you're abusing the inquiry. <laughs> I'm not going to say this, okay? But your relief from that suffering is momentary. <coughs> you see? It's 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 temporary. 
and I'm pointing you to something which is uh, beyond beyond all of that. The inquiry, if you follow it through, takes you really beyond all suffering. Uh, in the story of the story, I don't know if you know anything about the Bible. I have to speak about the Bible because I grew up with this. You see, this is my Bhagavad Gita somehow. And Jesus had some friends, uh, Mary and Martha. They were sisters, and the brother was Lazarus. No? And it says that he was Jesus was traveling in one town somewhere up out of this town, out of the region where they lived, and he had a message from them, saying, "Lord, please come. The one you love is sick and dying. Please come and help." Which is Lazarus. No? But he somehow, inspired by the Spirit, delayed that visit, and 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 didn't go. When he arrived there, you know, days later, as he was coming. I think Martha ran out to him, and uh, she was saying, "Lord, Lord, you know, if you'd only come earlier, <coughs> you know, my brother would uh, still be alive right now." And Jesus found himself saying, um, "He will, he will arise, or something." And she says, "Yes, yes, yes. I know. On the last day of the resurrection, he will come back to life. But you know, then he." Jesus wept. Actually, this is the shortest sentence in the Bible. It says Jesus wept because he was moved. Actually, because he had this kind of love, a kind of human love also for them, because he was close with them. And then he was brought. He says, uh, "Where, where is the body? Bring me to the body." And so she brought him. They brought him to where this this tomb. And then he he was deeply moved in himself. And he says, um, uh, "Remove the remove the stone, because in in those places there are big stone that cover these 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 sepulchres or tombs." And she said, "But Lord, no, no. If you do this, then you know it's, the body is it's been hot, and his body is stinking, you know, like this now." And then he was deeply moved in spirit, and he says, "Lazarus, come out." And Lazarus, this body came out again, and came out walking. Many people hear these things and they think, well, this is a kind of metaphor. But for me, this is living truth. It's a living truth, and it's not a big deal. The body came back to life. The vital force re-entered. The stinking flesh disappeared, and Lazarus came out. Okay. But he died again, isn't it? He didn't get resurrected, and Lazarus is now living in sort of Egypt or someplace. He died again. So even that great miracle was also a phenomenon that had to come to also an end. And yet earlier I spoke about it, that when he spoke with this Samaritan woman, he says, "Whoever drink this water will be." Thirsty again, <clears throat> but whoever drink the water with the water that I give him, that one will never be thirsty again. A well spring will spring up from within them. You see, and uh, that is pointing to the true life. That when you realize the the truth. That in seeing, that ability, that wisdom internally, that uh, comes comes to you. It doesn't belong to a person. It comes from that place, the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of heaven within you. That he speaks like this. He's just speaking about that. Our pure being. When I was in uh, Moscow, and uh, I think it might have been the last day, we came out of the we came out of the hall, and there was a a good group of people outside waiting to say hello or some goodbye or something outside. I went and they pointed me to a little place, a bench. I sat outside for a while, and then a group of people gathered around, and we were like there for a while talking and sharing in this very intimate sort of feeling. All people from Satsang. 
And then they pushed this boy up to me in a wheelchair. This boy they brought in a wheelchair. These people came and they were saying, please, you know, um, could you help him? Could you help him? Like this. I'm sitting there like this. And I said, please, could you help him? I said, what's the problem with him? They said, he has some weakness, something in the spine. He cannot walk. And First, the boy was looking. He's probably about maybe 13 or something. And he was very afraid. And I just sort of reached and was just sort of hugged him and said hello and stroked his hand a little bit like this and then he kind of slowly relaxed a little bit and then he says can you help me can you help me and this type of thing and the truth was that I didn't feel anything at all don't feel anything at all now supposing someone says why don't you help him you could heal him I say I can't heal anybody I can't heal anyone If 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 this type of healing was meant to happen, some inspiration would happen rising in my body, and it would act itself out, and something would happen. But to say, I decide to heal someone, it doesn't work like this. And they were really trying, oh, <laughs> I said, OK, can I see how he moves, and so on? I, OK, well, because something, my human side wants to help, but in my heart, I don't feel anything at all, you see? Then I said, "Okay." I said to them, "I'm not a healer. I cannot help him. Just uh, will you pray for him?" And okay, yes, I pray for him. After they went, I'm sitting there. I'm thinking, "Why did this thing happen?" You know, first I asked these people, "You were in satsang?" They said, "No, they're not in satsang. They were not. They don't know what satsang is actually. They happen to be driving past. They see a crowd of people uh, sitting around, and they had the feeling to stop." And they stopped and they came to brought, brought the boy. Then it turned out the lady sitting right next to me was someone I spoke to before. And were you there outside? Mm. The lady, she said, isn't it terrible? I said, what? She says, that it happens to children. I said, what, what happened to children? It, just like these things happen and it's so cruel. I said, what are you talking about? What's cruel? I said, I don't feel it's cruel. I don't feel that somebody who is in a wheelchair or whatever it is, it, it is a cruel act of God. I said, sometimes it's your good luck. I don't take this view. Who is to say what brings you here and put you in this position? You think having a healthy body and looking smart and painting fingernails is going to make you happy? And who knows? There are some belief that before we manifested in this form, we had a chance in our spiritual beingness to kind of look at what, how would you like to this life to to be portrayed. You, you have these things to learn in what in what form you want to be, and you can choose a beautiful form and have a great time and stuff. But you will forget who you are, and you can have a much more challenging form, and then somehow it will force you to kind of see. And you may have chosen and said, "I want to be in this form." Who knows? There's some set of belief, belief like this. How do you know what 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 a human life is made of? My sister was shot and paralyzed, but nothing she did wrong. And she said, "It was good. I see the good in it, because my life was not going anywhere. And since then, somehow." Her consciousness turned again, became more spiritual. She became aware more of God, and so. I remember one of my brothers was saying again to of her, "She's so strong." I said, "What? Why is she strong?" He said, "Because she's in this place, and she just she never gives up." I said, uh, "I don't know if you call that strong. She she has to do what she has to do." Later on, he developed the most severe form of multiple sclerosis and died before her also. Mm -hmm. eh? Two, three years ago, my brother, two years and a half years ago. And now my sister just passed away a few couple of months ago. But I don't feel regret in this way. My son passed away so many years ago when I was in India. I don't feel like he died too early. I, my, my mind and heart cannot accept like this. That some bar people are in these farms, and uh, and I felt after this, my heart felt pleased because I felt I couldn't see the point of this person coming. I don't feel nothing. Why they bring this boy to me, and uh, I don't have any nothing, you know?
why you bring this boy to me? If you want to heal him, heal him. Why you? What's this? And then I saw that this conversation was for this woman also, and whoever else was there, who had this very. And she was someone who came in satsang. And in fact, I was talking with her, and guiding her through an inquiry. And she was sort of coming into that inner space. And finally, out of spirit, actually, I said to her, "One more thing." Don't try to control anything. You remember this thing? And then right there she says, Ah, oh, that is. She says, That's the one thing that that I find hard to do. I'm always trying to control everything. And she's the lady at the end of the day came sit is saying, Oh, she was sorry because her own child is sick and uh, she says, I have to I have to control, I have to control, I have to control her medicine. I say, Stop Controlling and serve, don't control. So, we are just children. I point the people to that place which is beyond all pictures, all colors, all shapes, all time. How far back is that? It has no distance. If it has no distance, you should perceive it immediately. If it has no other, then it's not in any form you see. It's inside the very seer itself of them. But somehow to assimilate that knowledge, that understanding inside your heart, what stops it? I want to ask you. What stops you if there is any such thing? Even does does anything stop you? The mind. Show me how the mind can stop you. With doubting thoughts. That's not enough. The mind cannot make you doubt. The mind can invite you to doubt. It's you who doubt, not the mind. But you and say that I'm not the mind. Yes. You're not the mind, but you believe the mind. It's your relationship we are talking about, the relationship with your own mind. If you know quite clearly you are not the mind, immediately the mind lose power. <coughs> we are in a state, as I said before, of some, some kind of hypnosis where we believe we are our mind. Not entirely. You think you are mixed with the mind. That you are something else with a mind. Sometimes you think you are a body with a mind, as though the body is sentient and it has a mind. The body doesn't have a mind. It's something else that feels, I have a mind. It's the consciousness that feels, I have a mind. Are these things of any value while we are speaking? Yes. yes. Uh, I think it's fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown is a concept. But like if I if I were to explain, it's like yeah. it's a fear sometimes a fear that can't be really identified and sometimes it's not even seen, like it's more unconscious and it's like that not seeing of it which is what makes it <coughs> have power somehow. The fear of the unknown comes because we take a false security in the apparent known. Fear of unknown comes into being because we invented, in fact, a kind of security in the apparent known, because we don't know. But I think there's a reason why we develop that sense of security. Yes. For example, for the past 32 years that I've been alive, 
Mm. The sun has risen every day, so mm. I presume it will r- rise tomorrow. Yes, yes. 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 Well, what's that got to do with the truth? So, <clears throat> that's the known, so there's security mm. in something which is known. Yeah, but do you know that you will experience it tomorrow? Not 100% no. <laughs> How much percent then? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to 99.9% recurring. I don't know. <laughs> uh, are those things in our hands really? No. Uh, you say the sun rises every day, that's not your experience. It's not been your experience. Many days, many days took place that you were not even concerned at all about the sun. That's true. It was not a part of your day. It was not in your diary. But I'd notice if it didn't rise. Huh? But I would notice if it. You wasn't. probably wouldn't even. Mm-hmm. If it was pitch black, I would. <laughs> what about if it was overcast? <laughs> 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 It doesn't have to be a full eclipse. I mean, it's a bit overcast. <laughs> Did you notice the sun rising? <laughs> even there, we assume. Even there, we assume. I mean, the point that why I say this is that a lot of our life we assume. You assume you assume experience which you did not have. Even. For the vault, for the maybe the very small value that's worth, but uh, and we assume also future. About uh, yes, it's it's happened so far, and then why not it continue even? In the same way, we assume that people who die is worse off than we are. But it's an unknown, right? Huh? But it's unknown. But why we still assume that they're worse off. Because of the fear of the unknown. Yeah. So anything that goes to the unknown can't be good. Mm. You see how it works? Mm. So when I say that, but we are we are already the unknown, and the mind is occupying the position of the apparent known. It even presents a portrait of you <coughs> as apparent known in the vastness of the unknown you are. Your body, you say, you can know. Your mental processes and style of thinking, you can know. Character and personalities, you can know. But are these you? You are the one who is aware of them. And that which is aware of those, can that itself be known? To what does the word knowledge apply? To material or immaterial? To what does the word knowledge apply? Um. To qualities or non quality? I don't understand. I mean, if you have a knowledge about anything, it must have some something, some kind of quality to say that, oh, I can perceive this. It's mm-hmm. yellow or it's or it's, it feels like this, or it's a kind of that type of sense. It must have some quality that you can somehow interpret or measure or something, isn't it? For example, I know how to make a cup of tea. Yes. That's knowledge. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to make a cup of tea. Okay. 
but I don't know if that has a quality. Yes. You didn't say you know how to make a cup of coffee. I do, but anyway. Yeah, yeah no, no, but what, the point <laughs> is, the point yeah. is, you say, I know how to make a cup of tea. Yeah. 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 So that must be, that is already a quality, isn't it? So anything you say, I know how this thing, it must be a quality. Okay. It is a quality. So the quality, okay, so what I'm saying is the quality of anything, mm. uh, the quality cannot perceive itself. It must be perceived by something which is apart from that quality, isn't it? Mm. Only be measured by something. The mind is the instrument for measuring variety, change, and for interpreting something. So it must have some quality in order for it to engage with it. This is what I mean by to perceive something. Right. So that which perceives, that which is perceiving itself, can that itself be perceived? This was my question. I've been asking this for a while now. Where are you in the perception of that which is? Are you in the line of that which is being perceived, or are you in the position of being the perceiver itself? The perceiver. Okay. So, can this perceiver be described? Can it be seen? I want to try and box it. Okay. But if you box it, we can't. That's yeah. the thing. Yes. Why? Because I can't locate it. I, yeah. I know it's there. Yes. Who is speaking? It or something else? You see, you're using the instrument you've used all your life, which is your mind, to do this. And the mind itself, the process of uh, using the mind itself is perceived. Or is it not? says, how do I know that's just not a part of the mind looking at another part of the mind? Uh, who, who, who does the mind say that to? Say something about this one. Is it somebody's daughter or somebody's son? No. What is it? Don't put an image to it. Don't go down that road. See, the mind wants to put, to put an image to it. Yes. Why does the mind have such an influence? I don't know. <laughs> the consciousness itself creates an, an, <coughs> an association or a relationship with the mind, and it refers to the mind constantly as the source of knowledge to evaluate. So both the, the trusting in the mind, you see, 
and the one who trusts in the mind. The one who trusts in the mind, is it phenomenal or non-phenomenal? By phenomenal, do you mean Meaning perceivable? that it has, a, it has quality, yeah, perceivable. No. Well, not in a phenomenal way. It can't be perceived. In what way can it be perceived? In what way can it be known? Subjectively. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes sense that you see, say it's subjectively. Mm. Because objectively is when you're looking at something and saying yes. this is an object. Yes. But this is not necessarily an object in 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 a in with a kind of physicality. Or even a thought, say. Even a thought or a sensation yeah. also means it that yeah. So that which is trusting in the mind is it a phenomenon or not? It has a quality, no? Yeah, it's a thought. Does it have identity or not? It's a thought. It is a thought. The thought is mm. a very subtle one. Mm -hmm. Trust the mind. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What is aware of even that thought, which was so subtle it was about to be called pure subjectivity? The question. Yeah. You say that even that one who appears to be listening to or trusting in the mind uh, could at first you say it's not it's it's not a thing, it's not a thing. But then we talked a bit and we came to the conclusion that it must be posing with some kind of quality because it has an interest in the mind. So that's already a kind of quality. So then you say yes, it is very, very subtle. <coughs> It is a very, very subtle, and it is thought. Then I ask you, whose thought is it? Or what is aware of this thought? I can make it easier for you. There is already evidence in your words that there is awareness of this as a thought. Yes. That's already a fact, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Although I've lost it again. Mm. Okay. I'm being honest. Yes, 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 yes. So there's again, also a fear. Yes. A fear because I, because I'm going down a road. Yeah. Which is. Yes, the fear is, um, and the losing it are together one. The fear is coming. Um, and the sense of losing it, not being able to focus, they are related somehow. It's almost as though <coughs> something doesn't want to identify through clear understanding what there is, because a certain portion of a kind of game will be finished or something. And so, although you have not identified exactly what that game is, there is energetically a kind of fear coming. And this fear is acting as a to kind of persuade something, don't go down there. There's also energetically at the moment a lot of openness as well. Yes, very good. Then stay in the openness. The fear is also another another movement. It's just a movement. So don't tie into any movement. What is taking place at the moment is pure seeing. Seeing, which is a sort of intelligence that is present out of you, is perceiving these things and discerning them with some clarity. And there's a space in that. There's a joy in that. But sometimes the fear also come. But all these, all these are also um, expressions or movements inside the greater consciousness. Now, what happened is, I'm only asking you to look panoramically at these things. <clears throat> you can go and itemize into any one of them. You can go down into it. But I don't see the fruit of that because. For me, I'm just looking at all of them as just phenomena. 
I want to more know that in whose presence that phenomena is seen. Not 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 the reading of the phenomenon or the phenomena passing, but the perceiver of the phenomena. Who are you? Where are you in that? I can't find anything. Don't label that non-finding. Don't give it a negative reading or interpretation. Because sometimes, in the in the sense I can't find anything, there tends to be, if we're not careful, a kind of a negative labeling of that. Like, it's nothing. But I want you to really look with pure, with pure eyes and pure energy, what arises out of the non-finding, of the expectation of finding something phenomenally. Oh yeah, I know you would. <laughs> okay, in the pure feeling, the sense that you've lost something. Hmm? I've got a lot of energy going on at the moment. Okay, okay. But that's not me. Let good. Let okay. the energy go on then. Right. Just let it go on. Okay. You you already see something significant saying, I know it's not me. Yes. Yeah. This is already great. There's like a big burning in my yes. chest. Yes, very good. So, whatever it is that's burning, cooking there, leave that to cook. There's nothing there to to figure out. <coughs> There's nothing to figure out. Mm. There's awareness of that, but there's not any acute interest in that. That which is not participating in that activity of burning or whatever it is. Hmm? Is there any quality to that? No. No. Who are you then? Don't go to the past. Can you be other than that? I, I want to say no, but it seems like that's the mind. Okay. Okay. That which is watching, even if it was correct, that the mind said something like this, like, yes, I cannot be that. There will already be the perceiving of that, whether it is correct or not correct. So. Forget about correct or not correct. The perceiving of anything that the mind can put, hmm? and that you don't have to keep, you don't have to hold. So the mind is not going to help you here. Whatever the mind perceives or sends up is only another movement, which is meaningless without. Uh, that which uh, perceived this movement. So don't follow the movement. There is something that is more pure than any movement, because any movement takes place in that. So can you confirm, or do you need to think about it? No, because thinking goes down. Right. Goes down the wrong road. Okay, so leaving thinking. Hmm. It's really scary to leave thinking. Oh, oh, that's itself is a thought, no? Yeah.
<laughs> There's a stillness. Yes. Yes. Can this stillness uh, be disturbed? Is it anybody's stillness? No. You're sure? Okay, this is not bad. There's an awareness of the stillness also. So it must mean that there is something even uh, subtler than even that stillness, if stillness itself can be perceived. It's, it's very simple. Therefore, if stillness is replaced by something else, uh, that which perceives the stillness or the absence of stillness is still untouched by any movement. Yeah. Is it true or not? True. Yeah. Is that a thought? No. Very good. Where is what? Yeah. Where is it not? Okay, put it another way. See if we can come to the edge of it. No, because it's not in space. Huh? It's huh? No, because it's it's not in space. It's not in space. No. Explain what it means. It's not in space. It kind of feels like this observing thing is kind of floating in the sky. Yes. Right. Yeah. This but, is but but then. Yeah. Even that's observed. Yes. But then my mind is. I don't know why. That's also observed. Okay. Don't expect to find something. Otherwise, your mind will keep on presenting images for you to say, How about this? Is it like this? Which is fine, because even if it does that, it's only up to you to verify whether it's this or not. Can it be any object? Can it be any shape or form, any phenomena? No. And you are what? No. I'm I'm the observer. Any shape? Any portrait can be made of you? Any photograph taken? No. How does it feel? Feels, feels good, but there's some. I don't know. There's some. There's just something. If I'm being authentic about it, please. Something. Yes, yes. 
Don't be disappointed, say. <clears throat> Is something the mind saying? There's a doubt. Yes. That maybe it's just another concept. Yeah. Yes. That this stillness. Yes. Is just another concept. Yes. That's also seen also. Yes. See, the mind now says, uh -huh. logically, uh -huh. it can't be anything that's seen. Yes. So whatever's left is me. Uh -huh. Why do you say your mind says that? Well, how else can I report it to, to you or to myself? So therefore, when the mind says that, what is the mind? Phenomenon. Well, it's a movement. Uh -huh. You can say that, but when I hear you say this, if the mind itself says this, that whatever is seen cannot be you, and you are what's left, okay? Mm. Is the mind different from what's left? No, it's the same substance. Is it substance? It's not. They are not physical substance. It's right. like like thoughts come up in that. Yes, yes, yes. Is that secondarily, right? secondarily they come. Yeah, they they're not always there. They just, no, they come. Okay. Is there been anything profound out of this inquiry for you now? I've peeled back everything. Yes. I'm left with the stillness. Yes. Yeah. Which you say you can but also But I feel perceive. like I'm going in a bit of a loop with this stillness. Yes. Isn't that also another kind of image that is also perceived? Are you in that loop? No, I'm observing it. Yes. By observing it, do you become tied to anything? No. Do you have to have a relationship with what you observe? No. Okay. That's it. You said it. <laughs> the mind keeps wanting to verify it. Yes, the mind. If you want to call mind, mind, or whatever. The mind. Why keeps not say mind? Up. Why not say mind is it? What about if you include the mind and say mind is it? It's. it's Will that be dangerous? Okay, what about if you don't touch the word mind or the concept mind at all? Then it's not there. You have the power. Like it can't be. It just can't be observed. Like it can't be. Yeah. I, I, I can't put it in language yeah. about what it is. <coughs> and what about you? Can you put in language what you are? Is there a difference? No, it's me.
I think something needs to sink in. A little yes, bit. yes. Thoughts will come to the contrary, and they will only have uh, as much potency as there is interest arising from you to believe in them. But if believe in them occurs, will you be able to judge that as also a phenomenon, as a movement, and leave it be? I hope so. Or will that phenomenon pull you out into the shape, into a shape, and you become also a phenomenon? Now it's seen that any phenomenon is not me. Very good. This is the birth of the world. That out of that infinite, unknowable one, a shape arises out of it, and it says, I am that shape. And then you can have a negotiation with the mind, and concepts can happen, and everything else can come. But I would encourage that you contemplate this routinely. Just be in that for a while, as often as you can contemplate it. Nothing else. Whatever work you have to do, you do. But make a habit of just contemplating this, which you are seeing now, which you are confirming, uttering, verifying. Just a game. Yes, you can say like this. The game is also that you might feel a bit different in the morning. You might feel uh, different from how you're feeling, and it would seem like, oh wow, yesterday was so nice, or wow, what was that, or something. And that's also a feeling in the game. You can say like this. But also, that is also perceived or perceivable. And you must continue your contemplation in that. I tell you, the big thought that comes yeah. is that you. Okay, there's still some kind of feeling of the I am the body. Yes. But I'm not, because that's observed. Yes. Right. But this thought mm. of like, look, the body's here. Mm -hmm. What, what if the body is not here? Mm -hmm. Is that still going to be there? Mm -hmm. That which I've recognized yeah. as being me? Yeah. There's nothing to figure out right now. That is, at the moment, a premature question. You don't need to don't buy that right now. What will happen is that for a while, your mind will try and find, visit places, pull you into places where you cannot possibly answer a question. You understand? Because it's and, unknown. Uh -huh. Because it's unknown. Yes, because it's unknown, and then somehow it will try and create some kind of thing like, okay, so if you don't know that, then you're not sure, then are you? Yes. So just say, just just leave, just leave that for now. Otherwise, the mind will take a form to 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 keep pushing up riddles to try and pull you into a state of doubt again. Just for a while, you must continue with this to keep look and clarify. There's not a lot of things you need to know. Actually, I don't know if there is anything you need to know, except that whatever it is that's arising, it is observed as a phenomenon. That's all. Don't go into any kind of politics. Don't go into any kind of, you know, too much uh, calculation and too much noisy contemplation. Don't try to figure anything out. Just keep on confirming. But I cannot be that. How does that sound? Good. Yeah.
sometimes my question is, can you bear your own presence? It's hard. Is it? That is hard, or is the most effortless thing? Because if it is hard, no, it's not. It's not. Good. It's not. Okay, let's go no further then. <laughs> <laughs>